Hey, how's it going? Today, you're going to be learning about sound in your videos and specifically in travel filmmaking. So, this is something that's really underrated in this kind of travel filmmaking space. So if somebody's going, to, going out to make a travel video, they don't usually think about sound because it's going to be something that they use kind of as a music track. So you don't even think about recording sound. You just think, oh, I'm going to point the camera here. Don't worry about sound because we've got this big music track that we're going to use and no worries there. Sound is very, very underrated and it's super important. So there's a few different things that I'm going to be talking about in this video that you guys can go away and use in your videos, like implement straight away that's gonna give you a lot of flexibility in the sound that you're using and therefore a lot of flexibility in your videos in general. So just as an example in this intro section here, you can have a scene in your video that is, let's take the example of a nice oasis in a desert. And you filmed a lot of this scene, it looks super cool, but then you come to your edit and you think, okay, I can only use two or three or four shots of this scene because it, that's, it fits into the music track like this. So I'm just gonna kind of cram these in, put it in there, and just to look cool, fits the music video, great. The thing is with having great sound design kind of knowledge and flexibility is that you can actually create a much more dynamic video where you give the scene room to breathe. So you can have maybe an intro section with music and then you have this big oasis scene and you're like, okay, this doesn't really work with this vibe and with the energy of this specific track. This is much more chilled. So what I'm gonna do is fade out this kind of party track and mix in some other sound layers, have a much more chilled track come in or maybe some cool sound effects to give it some depth, let this scene breathe for as long as I want it to, be more creative with it and then have the original music track fade in for the more party stuff that's coming later. If you have knowledge in this, it's going to give you so much more flexibility, honestly, to be more creatively expressive in your films. Sound design is very underrated, so that's why I'm doing a video on it today. And we're going to be going over five tips that you guys can just plug into your videos and take your stuff to the next level. So before we get into the tips, there's a couple of things worth mentioning. It's kind of important to record your own sound the whole time. Even if you're, you know that this section is going to have music in it, it's going to give you more flexibility and options in the edit if you have high quality sound that you've been recording wherever you're going. So this is what I use. If I know that I'm going to be using sound, I use this Rode video mic here. Um, I'm not paid or anything to say this. This is genuinely what I use. It's a Rode video mic. I think there's a newer version that's slightly smaller and more portable that you can fit in your backpack and take with you. Um, to be honest, I don't use that the whole time. I don't walk around with this on my camera the whole time, but if there is a scene that I know people are going to be talking and I might want to use their voices, or if there's some very cool atmospheric sound effects, I'll whack that on my camera and make sure I get them. The, other, the rest of the time I'm recording in my camera's audio, so just the in-camera, the audio stuff there. It's not the highest quality, but it can be used to just layer in certain aspects of sound when you want them to, such as laughter and uh, nice things like that. That's the stuff you can use. And you always need to be thinking a little bit about what you can use in the sound. Because if you don't, then you don't give yourself any options. This is super important. The other thing is that I'm using right now is worth mentioning is these radio mics. Uh, these are Sennheiser radio mics. I'm gonna link them in the description below. I use these for all my talking videos. We're talking about making travel videos rather than talking videos. But these are kind of expensive for microphones. You can get cheaper ones, but they're super reliable really good audio quality and this is what I use for my vlogs for anyone who is interested. The first technique is sound fading out to music. So this means having your original camera audio and using that and then fading that out and having a music track fade into your video. This is pretty basic stuff but it does give you that flexibility. For an, ex for an example you can be giving your video context by using this technique because if you have two friends talking and they're talking about oh, we're going to go to the Eiffel Tower right now and it's going to be great and you're just filming this conversation. Having this at the beginning of the video and then fading in a track as they start walking towards the Eiffel Tower and then it goes full music video mode can be really effective because it gives the video context. The audience are going to be able to understand what the hell is going on and it gives it like so much more personality than just having music and cool visuals to actually have people talking, people connect to people. This is going to make your videos better. So having this little technique here 
can start making your videos more flexible. You can do it the other way around as well. Have a music track, fade out, and then fade in the audio that is from your camera for a middle section of the video, have people talking, have people laughing. Um, even if it's just the atmosphere, if you're in a forest or something, you've got all these bugs chirping, you can just give people that nice sound. In my Thailand video, I did this with um, a, on a boat ride. I was just filming the boat, I was filming the ocean, and you could hear the ocean sound effects. And I was just watching the clip, thinking, wow, this is actually really nice just with the audio. So I wanted to fade out the track, include just a bit of the audio, and it gets people more grounded in what's actually going on. And it makes that contrast as well, makes people just stop and kind of realize what's happening. If you just have a music track for three minutes, even if it's a great video, people can kind of just start nodding along. But if you kind of keep their expectations a bit, um, they don't know what's going on, you can have the track fading out, something else fading in, and people are gonna be more engaged all the time. All right, so tip number two is to cut your music track shorter. If you've got, this is, this is something that I just need to tell you, right? If you have a three minute video, but you don't have three minutes of great footage, don't make your video three minutes long. That's just number one advice, because you're just gonna be filling in gaps for no reason with footage that is just kind of like, why is this even here? Not criticizing anyone's videos, but just saying like, if you've got a three minute video and then you're like, ah oh, shit, I just need to make the video as long as the track is because that's the only thing I know how to do. Then you're just filling in the, the, the video of pointless footage that just doesn't even look good. People are gonna get bored. So what you need to do instead, and I do this as well, is cut out a section of your track if you don't have enough footage. So you can make a three minute track into a one minute 30 track and your video is gonna have that punch. So what you can do, rather than just kind of using a section of the track, you can start the track at the beginning, end it at the end, you can just cut out the middle section. Now this is kind of a complicated thing to do, um, there's details in that, but essentially you just need to find a point that is kind of a natural fade out in the music and maybe a natural fade in in the music a minute later, cut out that, bring them together and put a crossfade in the middle. That's the basic gist of it. And you can get very natural transitions with this. People are never gonna realize if you do this right, and it's really going to make your videos way more punchy if you don't have enough footage. Tip number three is mixing two different tracks together. So if you go and watch my Europe Spring video, you're gonna see, I think it's about five different tracks mixed together within one video. Because I had so many different scenes in that video. I had so much footage from different places, mini sequences together, that using one big track for all of them just would have looked weird. And I wanted to make something more expressive, something slightly longer, something more creative. So I mixed different tracks together for the different scenes in the video. And you can do this as well, whether it's just with one or two tracks in your video or whether you wanna make a 10 track long video. You just need to mix those tracks together to create different scenes. And this is totally possible, it's totally doable. Sometimes the mixes together won't be perfect, but you can still get away with it if you use sound effects within the mix, is what we're gonna get onto in the next point. What's up, dog? Oh my God, that is just horrible. I would really not like to be the owner of that dog. So point number four is adding sound effects into your video. This means not only adding real life sound effects, as in if there's an ocean, you add a sound effect of an ocean. If there's a dog, you add a sound effect of a dog barking. You can do this and it adds a depth to your videos, but I also mean adding more abstract sound effects such as swooshes, impacts, and what you can use these to do is use them to help you fade in different tracks and fade out other tracks. So as a track fades out, for example, you can use a swoosh or like a symbol to kind of help fade that track out and then if a track's coming in you can kind of use a sound effect that builds up to a point it goes kind of rushes up as that new track comes in if you watch my thailand video and listen very carefully you're going to see this in action when i fade in and out the different tracks in that video so that's like more of an advanced technique and you can use it very effectively to make just get like a cool sound design going in your videos you can use swooshes with anything you can as as a shot transition you can use a swoosh there as something happens in the video that's kind of like, whoa, what is this? You can add an impact. The sound design can kind of, as long as it supports the visuals, it can really add a depth to your videos that's gonna make people think, this is professional. So this final tip number five is really just a shout out to crossfades because they can help you in so many different ways in mixing sounds together. Whether it is, for example, I'm probably gonna use this in this video, 
transitioning in between scenes to kind of mask that kind of slight change in sound you're going to hear. So you can use it with people talking, or you can use it fading out music, you can use it fading in sound effects, use crossfades to help mix things together and make everything seamless rather than having those horrible harsh kind of clicks that happen when something fades, well something just leaves too fast rather than fades too fast, which is what the crossfade is going to help you with. Okay, so those were the five techniques that I use in sound design that give me way more flexibility in my videos. If you're interested in a complete breakdown of how you can actually do each one of those, those techniques with a live on-screen demonstration of me breaking this down in my own videos, building live kind of little videos in front of your eyes using these sound design techniques, then that's all inside this week's content video inside the Travel Video Academy. So the Travel Video Academy is a monthly membership program where you get two content videos a month. You also get two live Q&A calls where you send in your videos and I literally break them down in front of your eyes, give you feedback, give you tips, and action steps for you to go and make your next video even better. There's also a nice Facebook group with an awesome community that's happening right now. So this all together makes you a better filmmaker because each and every week and month you are getting actionable feedback on your own videos and it can really step up and be that kind of rocket fuel you need to just smash you through the stratosphere to the next level in your travel videos and it's happening all the time within the members there which I'm super excited about. So if you're interested in that for more information click the link below. Keep filming guys, have a great day, bye bye.